Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Greg. I'm going to go over the cryptocurrency market, even though I got the uh, French stock market uh, on the screen, along with the S&P 500. I wanted to do this to make a point. I was trying to explain this on Twitter. Sometimes the uh, message doesn't come across. And excuse me if I don't come off uh, quite right. Right now, guys, I am recovering a little bit. So the past four days have been pretty brutal for me. Um, mentally, mentally. So for those who are on Twitter, you know what I'm talking about. Anyhow, now we're back on to, uh, to this chart and it's the uh, French index, the French, uh, uh, stock market. You can use this with the, uh, I think the FTSE and, the the German and also the Spanish stock market guys and do like a correlation. And then also too, when it comes to S and P 500, you could do a correlation against other stocks like Facebook and, um, Maybe even using, there's another gentleman, I watched a video, I shared a video with you guys on Twitter where he used Caterpillar, where the, uh, uh, proving his point with the S&P 500 and also myself too, is that down here in this area on the S&P 500, more than likely that was some sort of significant bottom that I've been saying all along. And I'm going to explain to you, this is a big deal for Bitcoin, okay? So if the S&P 500 obviously is going to drop like a rock, then Bitcoin probably is too. And that is basically the uh, the narrative. So the narrative right now, guys, is that for the past 10 years is that it's been 0% to 1%, been low interest rates, and now interest rates are going to be creeping up over 5%. So the narrative is that because of that, that the uh, S&P 500 and Bitcoin and basically all the risk on assets have to drop like a rock. My point here is that the market is probably transitioning into a different era, if you will. That's the only way I could describe it, okay? What I mean is we're probably not going to be seeing these 0 and 1% low interest rates anymore, guys. So the, the, the theory is that is because they're up high, people are expecting a pivot, and they're going to bring them back down, and that's when it's going to blast off the market. Uh, it's probably not going to work like that, guys. Um, that was 10 – that was for the past – 10 to 13 or 14 years. It's probably not going to be like that anymore. So when uh, things change, you have to change and just not assume that it's always going to be like that. You can go through time and look at interest rates in the 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s, early 2000s in the last uh, decade. And it's probably going to be different in this decade. So just saying. But here's the uh, French stock market, guys. You can see here's its dump. That was March of 2020. You can see I have it lined up perfectly with this one and then how it went up and did a peak in uh, January of 22. It peaked at the same time as the S&P 500 and it came down and did a bottom on the French stock market the same exact time as the S&P 500. And the French stock market has uh, broken all-time highs, guys. Okay, so what's going on here is the uncertainty in the market. Everybody is scared to get in because of everything they're viewing in the news with JP basically, and that's what they're doing right now, guys. So there's still a lot of disbelief and this has to drop like a rock based on the theory of what I just explained. I hope that makes sense. I hope I explained it well, that this could definitely be, an, I'm not saying that the S&P 500 is going bullish, guys, but it's going to be in an uptrend. So you have a real, you do have a good shot that this could go up, probably not to all-time highs, but I'm looking at somewhere between 43 to 46, maybe 4,700 near those uh, highs, guys, and then it could have a dump, okay? It depends on how this sequence is going to play out, okay? So just don't know. I'm just kind of going with the worst-case scenario of what I think that it is. It's a corrective move up and then a swing back down. But in the meantime, there's going to be a swing up, okay? So I wanted to put that out there. And why? Uh, and you can go through the correlations on other stock indices, international. I showed it with Spain on Twitter. You can do it with the German index. You can do it, uh, like I said, all those other ones, you go correlate it. You can correlate the uh, other major stocks like why, you know, Facebook bottomed. Um, that's one of the reasons. There was a guy that explained in a video again. He was talking about Facebook. And that was one of the things kind of dinged in my head, too was that when Facebook made that bottom, I looked at it, I made a video and I said, look, that's the time to buy it. And it got out of there real good. More than likely the uh, indices and the NASDAQs probably made a bottom too. So, and now let's go over the, uh, so what does that mean for Bitcoin guys? What does that mean for Bitcoin? More than likely, in my opinion, all Bitcoin is in, is in a correction. 
Okay. Um, just based off the data and looking at this, you know, I, I'm just watching some videos and can it, can it, it's going to have to retrace quite a bit, in my opinion, to be able to, to swing back down. But this to me is um, you're looking at, at a minimum one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So you have a, a seven swing or a possible one, two, three, four, five. Um, you know, the, right now, if you want to be bearish, your worst case scenario is going to be that this was an impulse move down. It's going to do a three wave swing back up. So it's going to come back up to 23 plus probably in that, that area, 23,000. And then it's going to swing back down. You're just not going to know what this is until it does that uh, trend, uh, the reversal here. But in this area, it did go just below my box, but it didn't break that low. There's a low of 21,378, guys. I'm still expecting that uh, go, to go up. Um, I'm not going to go in the micro counts of uh, Elliott Wave um, just because they change so often. And um, I just I just don't like to do that. They just change so much. You know, you got to do a video every four hours because it changed. But I like to use the RSI, show you guys the, the details in the RSI. So here's the RSI in the 12-hour. You can see in the uh, it's an oversold right now in the 12 hour. The stochastic is a deep and oversold. So there should be a reversal. And even on the daily, the daily has room. The daily has room to drop, but in the stochastics is way and oversold. So I'm still expecting a reversal. Um, one of the things you can do right here is if Bitcoin makes a move over here, what are the other altcoins going to be doing? You know, are they ripping really well? Are they just uh, not going anywhere? Things like that. So. That's what I would be checking out to get an idea on what could be happening with Bitcoin over here. Okay. So, like I said, now the now the the best case scenario for Bitcoin is that it's finished right there and it could start maybe a new trend over here and it could get into a one, two. That is possible. Um, but that would be a very short correction off of off of this whole wave sequence. Um, probably the more probable type of deal is that it's going to swing back down where it did right here. It'll swing back up in a three wave, and then it can swing back down over here, back down to 20,500. So like this, guys, I'll show you like this. It could have a it could have a three wave swing right here, a three wave back up, and then maybe do a five or a three back over here, back down to these areas to 20,500. Going all the way into, um, see, it's the middle of March right now, so... Probably could take that up for another week or two and then probably two weeks. So going into April or something like that. But you want to pay attention to the overall trend of what's going on with the uh, S&P 500 too, guys. So here's the deal with the S&P 500 is that, like I explained before, is there's so much uncertainty in the market. And there are so many people that have that theory that interest rates are going up and probably going to raise in 50 basis points. That's not going to be a surprise. Um, the markets are actually pricing that in right now. You can go to the, uh, I won't go over in too much detail, but you can go to the uh, two years, um, the two year treasuries, okay? Um, and then the uh, 10 years, okay? The 10 years are having a hard time staying above 4%. The two years got up, to, I think, to 5.09. And they could peak back up to the two years could go all the, the two years are a benchmark of where the fed's going to be raising their rates guys. Okay. That's basically what the two years are for. So if the two years go up to say 5.3, that's probably the area where the fed's going to be raising their rates. That's why you want to pay attention to the bonds guys. But whenever the two year peaks out and starts going down, that's going to relieve, uh, relieve the pressure off the uh, risk on assets. Same thing with the 10 year. The 10 year, I think, is just in a correct move up and it's going to start swinging back down here in the next month or two. Um, but that's what you want to pay attention with on that. Um, another clue on pay attention at GBTC is what kind of move is it making here? Um, because you have an impulsive type move here and then a long swing over here. Is this going to be an ABC corrective move up? If it can get up into my box area about starting at uh, $14 and then getting up to $14.5, you have a good shot that it, it finished a correction here and that this is a new su sequence that's going up. I know there's some news about uh, GBTC winning a case against the SEC and things like that, but still haven't been able to rule out that this is not a corrective move up. Okay, so um, 
But basically, that's pretty much about it, guys. I wanted to go over Bitcoin and let you know it's um, should be coming into an into a bounce. And then pay attention to the altcoins, what they're going to be doing. Ethereum 2 is the same thing, guys. Um, it actually looks a lot stronger than uh, Bitcoin. And it's been doing a little bit better than Bitcoin recently. And that is because if you pay attention to the uh, ETH BTC chart here on the daily, I said if uh, this has an inverse head and shoulders, you have a good shot that uh, a move like this that happened in June of 22 until September of 22 could be going on over here. And Ethereum is going to be outperforming to the downside as well as to the upside over uh, Bitcoin. And so far it has. I'm still just waiting that if it breaks that high right here, then that was probably done right here. I was expecting another low down to these areas. So um, still waiting patiently for that, guys. If that's going to happen, you're going to see uh, the cryptocurrency market, altcoins, um, Ethereum and the altcoins start taking off. Okay, really, really well. Uh, Gala is another coin that uh, I pay attention to that you guys should know to follow me that I'm very, very bullish on Gala. Not only because of the technicals, but the fundamentals on Gala, guys. The fun Fundamentally, between the fundamentals and technicals, in my opinion, Gala is probably one of the best cryptocurrencies out there. There are some other ones that are pretty good, but I really, really like Gala. Um, it's in the ga it's in gaming. It's gonna it's gonna in, in music. Um, Gala has a lot going on, a lot going on. I see Gala doing really, really well going into the future. And what I've been doing is I've been scaling in Gala. Like I've been telling you guys is that it went just below my target box. I wasn't concerned about that. It happens often at that 0 0.035, 0 0.034. And uh, last night you could have got some at 0 0.03. Okay. And uh, with a strategy with Gala is that I'm looking at, you know, could it go back down to low three cents? It very well could, guys. But daily chart is getting pretty low in the RSI. I got oversold into the uh, 12 hour here. Um, it does have some bullish divergence, but that's OK because it should be uh, coming down in five waves right there, guys. So I'm still expecting at a minimum another swing for Gala, guys. So you got to swing right here. You have an A and then a B and a C at a minimum, or it's one, two, three. Um, you know, that's the whole thing. My my hopium, if you will, or whatever you want to call it, is that I do think that we're going to see a third wave over here. You have a good shot of that. ICP is another one, as long as it didn't break that low. I mean, there you go. It didn't break that low. If it gets out of there, you very well probably could have a really, really bullish ICP, guys. Um, it's going to depend on what the market is going to give us. Lido is coming down into an area. It needs to correct that whole cycle. It looks like it's doing pretty good at doing that. Come down and correct that cycle. Uh, Matic, you know, the people that have missed Matic from the June 22 bottom at below 40 cents when I said to get it. You know, Matic now is giving you a second shot. You take a look at this right here. Um, it's all the way down there and oversold on the uh the 12 hour chart. Take a look at the daily. Yeah, it's getting down there pretty good. So could it have more downside? Could you see 90 90 cent area for uh Matic? You could, you could, but like I said, on some of these cryptos, you can miss it. So you have to have a layering in strategy if you're looking at something a little bit long term. So the overall picture with Bitcoin right now, guys, is that if Bitcoin breaks this low right here at 21,411, thereabouts, then you can say that this whole sequence is done with a five wave move. Okay. It could still be bullish, and I'll do probably a three-wave swing over here, and it'll take some time, and you might not see a bunch of bullish activity going into April, okay, over there. If Bitcoin hangs on to that low, guys, okay, that's going to be extremely bullish for Bitcoin. Now, the argument on the bear side, guys, I'm going to go over the bearish argument on a weekly chart, okay, just to refresh some people's memory, because I see it a lot. I see it a lot in the YouTube videos. And you can't deny, you cannot deny this, uh, this move is that this is an ABC, okay, right here. You have a three-wave swing and a three-wave swing, and then you have a, uh, a five-wave impulse up. There's a couple errors with that right now, the way it is. With this move right here, the bottom area of that 
is 17,800 more or less. But the this B wave came so deep beyond this wave, okay? Usually what that means is that you're going to have a very, very strong C wave, okay? Um, so a flat move would be it stays even. But I want to go in the details of that. If this is a flat move, in my opinion, it still has a lot more to go, guys. Um, it just it would not make sense to me for a cryptocurrency to just do a expanded flat move like this and not even hit 1.618 on logarithmic. OK, that would be a minimum target that I would ex expect on a flat move. And more than likely, 2.0, 2.27 and also 2.618, okay? Those numbers are very, very realistic for a flat move. That's a, uh, right here was a flat move. I don't know if any of you guys remember this day where Bitcoin shot up real quick and real fast and everybody got bullish in less than a day was right here. This is a flat move, guys. And that, that move right there is probably, uh, let's see, let's take a look at that move. You can see it came pretty deep, 3.618. OK, but you see how deep that B wave went and how fast and aggressive it shot up. So that's what I would expect. That's what I would expect with Bitcoin. Let me go to a weekly. That's what I would expect with Bitcoin in this flat move right here. If this is a flat move. Now, the other uh, the other deal is with it, too, is that the argument is that the flat move is complete with Bitcoin right here. And that it's going to start downtrending. Okay. So the problem is with that, in my opinion, is that this three wave move that it did, this would be a connector wave. Okay. So let me, let me show you guys something real quick. All right. I'll make it real simple. You have a WXY wave, right? Just like so. Here's your ABC. And then you take another ABC like this as an example in between this abc and that abc is a connector wave just like over here a b c this is more like wxy though okay but just for uh simplicity let's just call this a b c just like this one this is a connector wave the problem is with saying it ended right there this is a very shallow connector wave guys it didn't go up very much um it's a very, very shallow connector wave. And if it did only correct to there, you're looking at, so you got to go to the bottom of the C wave, okay, right there and check it. It's only 0.236. Connector wave targets for me, usually I like to see 50%, 55, and 618, all the way up there, guys, for a connector wave target um, in a cryptocurrency, unless they're extremely bearish especially one like uh, Bitcoin, you know, a smaller cap crypto is a little bit different story. The issue is with that is that now you, you take your leg like this and you're going to put it something like that. Okay. And then you can expect some time, time and depth equality over here. Okay. And if you take it off log, you take it off log, just like, so now you're looking at these uh, type of targets like that guys, all the way back down to those areas. So more than likely, in my opinion, as a matter of fact, if you take the uh, the leg at it, if you look at this on log now, you can see how, you probably can't see, you can see now how that connector wave is very, very shallow. So what you want to do is with it off log, okay, off a log and check it again. So I can go like this, here's my ABC. And then if I put it over here like this off of log, you can see the problem right there too. It goes into negative more or less like that guys so it doesn't make sense for bitcoin to end a connector wave right there in my opinion guys okay i think a lot of what's going on in my opinion is the same thing that's going on over here in the uh uh like the nasdaq um same thing that's going on over here in the s p 500 is that people are basing their ta off of interest rates it's just not possible that bitcoin can go up when interest rates are at 5%, guys, markets can adjust. They can adjust, okay? They can do that. So I'm not concerned with it uh, just yet. Um, I want to see what the reaction is in this area with Bitcoin, guys. Let me get a clearer picture here on the four-hour. 
So I want to get a picture of what what's going on in here and what kind of count this is. This this is to me. Um, I don't think this is an impulsive move. I think it's some sort of uh, a double combo, like an ABC X wave ABC. That's what I think that this move is. I don't think it's a five wave impulse. Um, it did seem to respect some sort of trend right here. If you take a look at that on Bitcoin, this trend right here that I'm looking at with it, and you can see this downtrend line, I think it's more or less like this, something like that. Maybe it's more like this. It respected a downtrend line, kind of like that, taking out that wick right there a little bit and respected that. But the issue is with the, uh, with it being an impulse here on the eight hour chart, from this peak to there, there's no divergence, okay? You don't even have it on the six hour, I don't think. You don't have it on the six hour. You don't have it on the, uh, you have maybe a little bit on the four hour, okay? So it is possible, but to me, this is more like a W, X, Y, A, B, C, X, A, B, C. And it might not be done. I might need to come back around, back down here to 21, four-ish or three. All right, guys, that's the end of my video. If you made it all the way to the end, do me a huge favor, drop a like, hit the subscribe button. Peace.